let's analyze all the comic books released with a cover date of July 1938. This is month number two in our month-by-month -month look at all the comics published in the Golden Age, starting last month with Action Comics number one and the first appearance of Superman. So, month number two, July 1938. We see there's 23 comics released this month with this cover date. 11 of the 23 titles actually debuted in 1938. We'll see that Centaur Comics had the most individual titles out on the stands this particular month. And this chart lets us look at how many copies are on the CGC census. And we get to look at and compare the Overstreet price guide values of each one of these books. So let's go through this. Let's uh, look for some observations here. The first thing I notice, Action Comics number two is by far the most valuable comic of this month. It is also the most common book on the CGC census. So there's a definite uh, connection there. The high price tag has helped draw out more copies. So 33 copies in total have been graded. Uh, that includes the universal grade and restored grades, but no 9.2 zero or higher grade copies out of those. And we see a $9,700 for a low grade copy up to $175,000 for a copy graded near mint 9.2. Of course, this is just using price guides. So if you look down below, we see totals. So if you wanted to buy one copy of each of the comics out that month, if they were all 10 cents each at the time, it would have cost you $2.30 to buy a copy of all 23 books on the newsstand. But with current price guide values, low grade, it would cost you over $13,000 to buy a set of these, or $222,000 for high grade copies. And of course, that's if you could even find them. Because as we look at the CG census, we'll now see that we actually can't even obtain most of these books in high grade, even if we wanted to. They just don't exist. I do not know the exact print runs of these books, but let's just use an estimate of 200,000 copies printed per issue on this list. So 200,000 times 23 different books, that is 4.6 million comics were on the newsstands potentially that month. Out of 4.6 million copies, only 113 copies have been graded in all conditions. And if we can look at only the high-grade copies, only 10 copies out of 4.6 million copies have survived to be graded by the CGC in high-grade. That shows you the extreme rarity of these books. Now, most of these do not have superheroes in them, so a lot of them are not considered hot or great speculative type material. Um, but they, of course, have gained some value over the years due to their historical importance and their rarity. But if we look at the low-grade copies, which is what you would most likely find if you wanted to seek these out, you'll see that most of these actually can still be purchased for under $100 each. So it's not that expensive to buy most of these, just a couple of the key ones, of course, Action Comics number two being the bulk of the cost of buying a set of these. The other big books this month also include other DC and Centaur titles, which are the most collected if we look at the CGC census for all grades, we'll see that three of these books are so rare or undervalued that not a single copy has been graded in any condition, unrestored or restored. That includes feature book number 15, which features Barney Baxter from David McKay Publications. Zero copies graded and yet still a low price of only $42 to buy a low-grade copy. So quite affordable if you can find one. Feature Funnies from Quality, issue number 10, also has zero copies on the CGC census. Also quite affordable, $53 for a copy. And finally, The Funnies, number 22 from Dell Comics. This is a fairly popular series, highly collected, and yet no copies on the census. Still affordable, though, $52 for a low-grade copy. What else do we see from studying this chart? This is the highest number of comic titles ever up to this point, ever on the newsstands. 23 titles might not sound like a lot, but at this time, it was the highest it had ever been. First time it had passed 20. In fact, the month before, there was 18. 
At this point, comic books in the modern standard size format had been published for five years, so there was already over 400 comics published by this point, even though this is only month number two of our Golden Age history. Two new series debuted this month, Little Giant Comics number one from Centaur. It's got a heftier price tag of $200 for low grade. And Keen Detective Funnies number eight, and that one is also from Centaur. It isn't number eight, but it is actually the first issue of this title. And it's worth a hefty $300. So what books seem to be a bit more common than others? Well, yes, the Action Comics number two by far has the most copies on the census. After that, it's Detective Comics number 17. And after that, it's a tie between Crackerjack Funnies number two and Mickey Mouse magazine number 34. So, those are more of the highly collected titles, generally have higher price tags. So again, it kind of works that not only do they have the highest price tags, but there's more people seeking them out, more money involved, and therefore there's more copies on the census. So it's the cheaper books that just don't seem to turn up because nobody gets them graded because there isn't a lot of money attached to these books. All right, what else do we see? Famous Funnies number 48 is the cheapest book to collect on the entire list. Only 39 copies for a low-grade copy and $525 for a near-mint copy. So that's quite reasonable for a comic that's 80 years old. Again, if you can find one. Famous Funnies 48 was the highest issue t title of any comic up to this point. It was the longest-running monthly series and the only title from Eastern Color at this time. So what we're doing here is trying to put the perspective of the Golden Age history. What was out there? How are they collected now? How rare are they? And you get a good idea. So now if you're hunting these books out, you have a, a quick kind of comparison to go, what are books generally worth from this time period? And how are they worth compared to other publishers? Who's involved? Is it the first issue? Um, is there high profile writers or artists on the title? And you'll see that in our regular series where we will now, uh, in our next series, take a close look at each of these issues and look at all the highlights of the characters, writers, and artists in each issue. <laughs>